So chat GPT is a superpower for teaching and learning. We're probably sick of headlines like this, but I believe this is so. And I believe it's especially true for teaching and learning with code. And so what I'd like to share with you today is my experience of teaching with ChatGPT in my interaction design class at the California College of Art. But before I talk about new ways of teaching and learning with code, we need to take a look at the way it's been taught historically. So this is something that might look familiar to you. It's a Hello World script that writes two words onto a screen, and it looks complicated and impenetrable, and this is the way most of us are exposed to coding. And when I first started learning how to code, I had a professor who wrote variables and functions on the board with a blackboard. I struggled my way to a D on the midterm, and I dropped out. So what would a new Hello World experience in the world of AI look like? Well, it might be a little bit like this. This is a music visualization that I developed using P5.js, and it connected to the accelerometer in an iPhone so that as you moved the phone around, the shape would change, and you could switch between tracks. As you might expect, this was a little complicated coding-wise, and I plopped my students right into these hundreds of lines of code, and they were intimidated. But I told them, I don't expect you to learn every little piece of code and every little variable. Instead, we're gonna to work together with ChatGPT to make this project your own. And to do that, we're going to use natural language. That's what ChatGPT really affords us. So I'll show you some of the things that my students did once I gave them that project. ChatGPT doesn't make the best slides, but one of the first things students wanted to do was, instead of a still image in the background, could I have a moving video? And this allowed me to explain where the background was rendered, what an array is, and how it works. I had another student who didn't just want one visualization in the center of the screen, he wanted two of them coming together and, and apart like cell mitosis. It was complicated. It'll make more sense if I show you some examples of their work. So the first example I want to show you is from Clarice. So you can see she has videos playing in the background. As she moves the phone, the track and the image changes. And she changed the particles from circles to triangles, which allowed me to teach about classes and objects. My next student, Abed, he ditched the whole notion of a circle and instead had these waveforms growing together and apart. You'll see him as he moves his phone, he switches the track. He made the experience unique and his own. And we worked a lot with ChatGPT to refine it. The last example I'll show you is from Weichen. He wanted to have two visualizations and of course swap out the music and the image and was able to make that work. And as you see him moving his phone, you'll see the image and the, the waveforms kind of change. He's actually demonstrating right now the volume goes down. As you lower the phone, the volume comes up. They really liked this. I got good feedback. My favorite feedback was the coding parts are a bit too hard or some of the class material is too difficult because working with AI and machine learning doesn't make things easier. Teaching and learning is still hard. So five, what does this mean? So what? Five takeaways to inform teaching and learning that I gathered from this class. The first concept I want to share, the first idea, is that concepts and problem solving are what really matter. Mastery doesn't. Nobody has to go through memorizing syntax and doing that hello world example anymore. Instead, we can use computational thinking and natu natural language to create with code. And this leads to the second takeaway I want to share, that exploration matters more than direction. I could plot my students in something really complex, and they could, with ChatGPT and my help, chart their own path, not build piece by piece in a directed way. But ChatGPT isn't perfect. Machine learning systems generate examples, not answers. They still needed my help to integrate the code that ChatGPT was giving them. And I had to walk around and work with them individually to make it work. It doesn't work out of the box. Which gets to the fourth point. This technology actually means that more is required of teachers and students, not less. We've been empowered, but with that empowerment comes expectations. We can do more, we have to teach more, we have to know more. It's just different. And lastly, artificial intelligence is here. We have a responsibility to teach and learn with it. ChatGPT is in the news now, but many of you probably are already aware of new models that are coming out that are even more accessible and easy to run. This is my class. We were small, which made it a little bit easier to work with this technology, but I think these ideas scale and will have long-term impact on how we teach and learn going forward. 
So thank you very much and uh, appreciate it. <laughs>